Hello, everyone, and welcome to Johnny's Ambassadors Expert Webinar Series for Parents. I am your host, Laura Stack. I am the founder and CEO of Johnny's Ambassadors that was named in honor of my son, Johnny Stack, who died by suicide in November 2019 after using high-potency marijuana dabs and became delusional. So today we educate parents and teens about the dangers of high potency marijuana, specifically on adolescent brain development, mental illness and suicide. And this is a continuing uh, webinar series, which with Rich, Rich Wistaki, whom you will meet in just a moment after I go over a few logistical details. Um, this session is being recorded. Uh, so please share it with your friends and family if you are watching this on recording. Uh, Rich has kindly provided several handouts for you today, which are in the control panel and also on the page where you are watching this video. Uh, you can print them out if you want to follow along. He has his slides, he has a resource guide and another packet with some other uh, educational material, including some of the tracking uh, and monitoring software he'll be covering today. Uh, we will be taking questions. Uh, Rich will go for about 45 minutes of presentation, so please type your questions as you think of them, and we will cover those in the last 10 minutes or so of today's presentation. All right, without further ado, Detective Richard Wistocki has been in law enforcement for 30 years, 28 years with the Naperville Police Department, and in his last 22 years as an internet crimes investigator, SWAT operator with the Naperville Police Department, he forged numerous partnerships with the community and other law enforcement agencies. He is one of the founding members and an affiliate member of the Illinois Attorneys General High Tech Crimes Bureau, or ICAC. Rich's passion is teaching parents how to parent their children when they are online. He takes his juvenile invest investigations experience and applies it to teaching parents how to be better parents. He is an instructor for the Department of Justice and various law enforcement mobile training units and post units across the US. And he is also the creator of the Illinois Sexting Law Rich Wistocki, thank you so much for being one of Johnny's ambassadors. Thank you so much, Laura, for having me. And uh, to all you parents in this room, uh, I applaud you for being here to get information that you need. So before I start, um, I used to run a program called The Cop and the Convict. I was uh, uh, doing this program with a good friend of mine, uh, Tim Ryan who owns a man recovery foundation. And after him being a, a, um, a career heroin addict and he went to prison, of course he got clean in prison and created this uh, non-for-profit to guide and direct people into treatment. So him and I did this program called The Cop and the Convict, okay? So everywhere we did this across the country, Tim Ryan had followers like the Grateful Dead, like people would follow us in, in, in like concerts. One of the things that would happen is Tim would ask the crowd, how many of you are in recovery? And he'd get about 10 people raising their hands. And they said, stand up if you wanna stand up. And how many of you guys are heroin addicts? They all raise their hand, they're in recovery. He'd say, how many of you started with weed they all raised their hand so what you need to know as parents is that 92 percent of the heroin addicts started with weed now just because you smoke weed doesn't mean you're going to become a heroin addict but 92 percent of the heroin addicts started with weed and with the potency of today it is unbelievable what it is doing to our kids brains so you might be thinking to yourself what does a cybercrime guy have to do with drugs? Well, before I get started, uh, back in 2018, I was asked to do a TED Talk, a TEDx. So if you go to YouTube, put Detective Rich Wasaki TEDx, you'll see that I talk about parents' responsibility for kids' technology. So I'm about to say something that you may not like. You may wanna 
log off because it's too much information for you to handle, but uh, somebody has to tell you this. So here we go. All of you in this webinar right now are responsible for your children. I said it. Sorry, I didn't mean to upset you, but it's true. You see, you're not only responsible for your kids' food, clothing, shelter, and education, you are responsible for their technology as well. All the way up until they're 18. But there's this false sense that when we buy our kid a phone that we pay for and we let them use, you, you're telling them, let me see your phone. No, that, that's not letting me see your phone. Let me see the phone that I'm giving you to use because that's my phone. The second thing that parents have to get a grip on is that when it comes to technology, there's no such thing as privacy for children. Now, can I get an amen? Yes, thank you. You see, you're responsible for every facet of your child's life until they're 18, okay? So if you're responsible for them, I don't care if Nana, no new Tia, to you, Grandma, Grandpa bought them that new device for Christmas, they don't own it. You allow them to have it or not. I don't care if they cut grass all summer, babysat all winter, and bought that new iPhone 12 with their own money, they don't own it. You as parents allow them to have it. Now in my career, I've arrested over 300 internet predators, 300. And the common denominator in all those victims that I had is that when the parent allows the child to charge their devices in their rooms at night, that's when they get victimized. So parents, no longer should you allow your kids to charge their devices in their rooms at night. And what are they going to tell you? But I need to wake up in the morning. Go to Walmart and buy a $10 clock. It works the same way. But I need a backup alarm. Buy two. <laughs> Amazon has them three for two. So, again, when those alarms go off, bam, 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 they have to get up, right? Keep the devices out of their rooms at night. So, again, you're probably saying to yourself, what is this guy talking about? What does this have to do with drugs? Well, how do you know if your kid is using drugs? It's all in their cell phone. It's all in their cell phone. This is how they communicate. This is their reputations. This is their friends. This is their games. This is their whole network. Their whole overview of their life is in this device. So if you know what's in your kid's cell phone, you'll know if he or she is involved in drugs. So let's go back to that program that Tim Ryan and I did called The Cop in the Comics. So after Tim said, what did you start out with? What age were you were? And it was like 12, 13, 14. So then I would go up. I said, okay, you guys, keep, keep standing. I want to know how you ordered your drugs. And there'd be 10 of them there. Instagram, text message, Snapchat, Facebook, Instant Messenger, WhatsApp. They all use social media to order their drugs. So if you know what's in their social media, you will know what kind of drugs they're doing. It's simple. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you what those conversations should be. So what does drugs have to do with social media? Absolutely everything. When you see some of these images on their pages, and if you walk around this God's green earth as a parent and say, my kid would never, that's exactly when you need to check. Like, here's how misinformed parents are. I get moms and dads are like, I would never buy my 10-year-old a cell phone. No way. She's way too young. She only has an iPad. It's the same thing. Every app I can put in an iPhone, I can put on an iPad. Who needs phone service anymore with all the Wi-Fi? And this is how our kids get victimized, whether it's sexting, sextortion, cyberbullying, or the drug trade. 
See, it's your responsibility, parents, to see what your kid is posting. And if they're posting things like this, bongs, blunts, all that stuff, you know your kid is using drugs. Back in uh, 2016, I was on call. And I was on call and um, I had to go to an overdose. I get there and this beautiful model-like blonde-haired 18-year-old girl lies dead. I step over her body and I'm looking around her. I looked in her bedroom on the floor, on the tables, on the drawers, cut straws everywhere, rolled up dollar bills everywhere, blades everywhere. I go to mom. Mom's like, no way she's a heroin addict. No way. Uh-uh. She may drink a lot. She may smoke. She's no way. I was like, what are all these cut straws? Oh, she just has a nervous problem. What? Parents. If it quacks like a duck, if it looks like a duck, it's a duck. But sometimes parents have this false sense of entitlement. They suffer from a disease that I call the NMK syndrome. Not my kid. My kid would never. You don't know if your kid would or, or would not unless you check. Now, I'm going to give you the tools to check and to know for sure if your kid is involved in drugs. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you use monitoring software, okay, I'm going to show you how to use it. I'm going to show you what they are. I'm going to even give you a month free to check it out. If you can monitor your, their social networks, who they hang out with, where they are going, who they are dating, what parties they're going to, are they involved in, in vaping, drinking, sexual conduct, you will know if you see what goes on on their social networks. Because when you are going into their Snapchat, their Twitter, their Facebook, or their Instagram, this is where they communicate. Remember I told you those guys in recovery who follow around Tim Ryan? It was Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. That's how they ordered their drugs. And if you're in it, the sooner you know, the easier it will be for you to grab hold of the situation. And a lot of our kids today, it starts out with vaping and dabbing. One other uh, warning sign that I want to give you, if you go into your kids' computers, okay, your kid owns nothing, so you have every right to go in there, all right? I, I want to tell you another story that happened to me last year. I was teaching down in Southern Illinois, and I was teaching a bunch of parents about cyber safety. I went to dinner with the chief and the sheriff, and the chief said, uh, I asked Chief, says, Chiefs, who's doing your, your cyberbullying and your sexting and sextortion cases? He goes, oh, we don't do that. I, I can't, I, you know, we're a small department. I can't train people to do that. We just give it to state police. Okay. Well, if you ever need anything, here's my card. Okay. So I get my card. That was a Thursday. Monday morning, 7 a.m., I get a call from one of his detectives. He goes, are you Detective Wostaki? I said, yeah. He goes, what do you got? He said, well, I got two nine-year-olds who were on Snapchat. The other one thought it was a good idea to talk the other one into committing suicide and she did it. And now I have a dead nine-year-old. I said, oh my God, that's terrible. Some new phenomenon that's going on, ladies and gentlemen, is that cyber bullies feel empowered when they can get other kids to, to, make, to commit suicide. It's unbelievable. And this is what we're dealing with now because parents are not watching their kids on their devices. So. I said, oh, I said, okay, you got the devices. We got to get the messages and see how, how it went because there's some case law and some precedent going on with this. You see, I got the devices, but that's why I'm calling you. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I can't get into them. I'm like, what do you mean you can't get into them? I, see, he goes, I said, they're nine years old. The parents just got to put in the code. The parents don't know the, co don't know the code. I'm like, what are you talking about? Nine-year-olds have access to the devices and they don't know what the code is to get in? 
Nope. So I'm telling you parents right now, right here, and whoever's watching this video, if you give your kid a device, you best know how to get into it. If they change the password, this is a part-time job. If they change the password on you and you can't get into it, that's a consequence. If you spot check that device and try to get into it and something has changed or the code has changed or swipe codes change, that's consequences, that device is removed. That is part of being a parent. So when you're in this, in this technology, there's something called the Tor browser. You just download Mozilla Tor. Tor stands for the onion router. This will get your kid into what's called the dark net. The dark net, what happens there, it anonymizes their IPs so they can't be traced as to wherever they're going. What do they do on the dark net? They can buy guns, weapons, and they buy a copious amount of drugs. And this is how a lot of the fentanyl is getting into our country. It's through the tour, the onion router. So a clue is, if you go to your kid's computers and they have this glowing globe right here that I'm pointing at, this, this globe here on their tray or on their desktop, they are going to the tour and they could be buying drugs. And where do they have it delivered? To a neighbor's house who works till six because they can track to see when the package is coming in and go into the neighbor's mailbox and take it. So please understand, not only are we now looking in your kid's computers, we're looking in their cell phones and their social networks. So three places you can find out if your kid is involved in the drug trade. Where I'm from in, from in Naperville, uh, back in 2015, this happened. And as weed is being legalized more and more and more, a lot of kids are stealing their parents' edibles. But in this particular case, gummy bears were ordered from the tour. They were given out to 13 kids by a couple of buddies. And what happens when they eat the gummy bears, they'll have a gummy bear, but they don't realize it takes 45 minutes for that to enter their blood system to have an effect. They wait 15 minutes, they have another one. Another 15 minutes, they have another one. We had 13 kids overdose on gummy bears. So again, if you see the dark net, that glowing globe, or just ask them, hey, do you know what the dark net is? Do you ever go there? That's a clue. That's a clue, okay? These are some of the things you can buy. This is called Alpha Bay on, on the dark net. You can buy fentanyl. You can buy bear gummy bears. You can buy hash. You can buy weed all from the dark net. So please understand, if you want to know if your kid's involved, just look in their devices. All right. So I want to do a little um, exercise right now with you guys right on this video, okay? Right on this webinar. So I want you to go ahead and take your phones out. Go ahead and take your phones out right now while I'm talking to you. I want you to go to your App Store or Google Play, if you have an Android, and I want you to type in hide my pictures or hide my video. Go ahead and do that now on your device. Type it in there. I'll wait. Go to your App Store or your Google Play if you have Android. Type in, search for, hide my pictures or hide my videos. Get it? Okay. What you're going to see are 10 or 12 different apps that allow your kids to hide pictures and videos they do not want you to see. These are called vaults. When a kid has a vault, they are hiding pictures and videos they do not want you to see, okay? The most prevalent one is the calculator app. It looks like a calculator, it works like a calculator, but if you put the default password of dot, one, two, three, four, dot, and you hit AC, 
it'll open up all the pictures they don't want you to see. Now, this year alone, they've added to the security of the calculator app two things that they did. They, all, they, they put in a shake feature. So if a parent comes in the room and they say, let me see your phone, if the kid shakes it, the app will disappear and be deleted. If a parent attempts three or more times, it'll delete the app. So they put in security controls right in there. So how do I know if my kid has a vault? Easy. No kid needs two calculators in their phone. If they have two calculators in their phone, you know one of them is a vault, okay? So you need to do some investigating, looking at their apps. If they have two apps that are same calculators, one of them's a vault. And Snapchat is so great, guys. They have their own vault called My Eyes Only. All you really have to do is hit the deck of cards next to the Snap button. And if you see My Eyes Only and this pad comes up, that means they have hidden pictures and videos in there. Let me see if I can show you real quick. So I'm going to open up my iPhone here. Go to my Snapchat. Okay. So I don't know if you can see this. So you see the little deck of cards right there? You just hit that. When you hit that, see on the right-hand side? Let me see if I can get that. Where it says uh, my eyes only there? If you hit my eyes only, and if there is a pad there, like that, you know that they're hiding stuff from you. So here's how it goes. So you know, sweetheart, Aunt Sally and I want to start Snapchatting. Isn't that great? And what are you going to get? You're going to get the whole eye roll. Yeah, whatever, Mom. Well, can you install it for me on my phone, buddy? Sure. D -d 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 there you go, Mom. Okay. But she was talking about where the stories are, sweetheart. Where's that? Well, Mom, you just hit the, the deck of cards next to your button there. Can I see it on yours? On the phone I let you use? Can I see it on your phone? Sure. So you hit the deck card, see my eyes only, hit my eyes only, put the code in. What are you talking about, Mom? Put the code in. I know this is a vault, and I know you're hiding stuff in there. I want to see what's in there. But, Mom, I, I put the code in. If you don't put the code in, guess what? Your phone's going for a swim, and you're going to go to a flip phone. So put the code in. There's nothing we can't talk about. Put the code in. Once you put the code in, you're going to be able to see all the things they're hiding from you. People, our kids are training each other to hide their pictures and videos in the vaults. I like this one. Okay. If you want an Instagram, I'm going to have to follow you and you're going to have to follow me, right? Your kid's 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. You know, kids, you know what the average age of kids smoking weed is? Sixth grade. That's when they start. So when you say, and they ask you and beg you that they want an Instagram account. Now, what you guys have to understand is this. When I talk to fourth and fifth graders, again, this is about catching them early, right? If they're seniors in high school, we are way too late. We got to catch them when they're in fourth, fifth, sixth grade, because we know that the average grade they're smoking weed in is sixth grade. So if they're in fourth and fifth grade, how old are they? They're like 9, 10, 11 years old, right? Yeah. So did you know in order for your kid to have a social network, they have to be 13? They have to be 13. All their fourth and fifth graders, 9, 10, 11, right? So what happens is your kids are coming to you and say, Mom, I want a Snapchat because all my friends have a Snapchat. It's not fair. You let my older brother. It's not fair, Mom. And you give in. Well, when you give in and say, okay, but I have to follow you and you have to follow me. I have to see what's on there. But what you don't understand, parents, is that when they have to put in their date of birth, when they sign up for an account, they have to lie about their age. And let's face it, our kids are not the best mathematicians when it comes to uh, 
math, right? When it comes to math, they're not, probably because core math. But anyways, uh, what happens is, let's see, I was born in 98. I was born in 2008. How old do I have to be to be 13? Do I go up with my date of birth? Do I go down my – oh, heck with it. I'm just going to round up to 2000. So when I'm in schools across the country, I ask how many of you round up 2000 because you didn't want to figure out the math. Three quarters of them raise their hand. How old are they today, ladies and gentlemen? 20 years old. So we have a bunch of 9, 10, 11 years old posing as 20 years old. Who do you think is going to talk to them? Adults. Who do you think some, who do you think is going to send them inappropriate things? Adults because they're adults. Yes, my nine-year-old is now 20 because they lied about their age. And when it comes to Instagram, they have an Instagram that they have for you, and then they have an Instagram that they really use called their Finsta. So if you are the parent that says, okay, I'm going to follow you and you're going to follow me. Okay, mom, yeah, no problem, no problem. And you look in there, the one you know about. <clears throat> so how do you know if your kid has a Finsta? If they haven't posted anything for a week or two, you know they have a Finsta. They have another Instagram account that has everything on there. So please, parents, don't give in to that NMK syndrome. My kid would never. Because when you start thinking that, they know you think that, and therefore they're going to get away with stuff. It's not a matter of getting away with stuff. It's a matter of knowing and educating because you're responsible for what happens in their lives. <clears throat> so let's go through sort of an education of what the current trends are when it comes to smoking weed, okay? So this is a pound, this is an ounce, this is a gram, and this is a blunt. Now, if you're putting away socks and underwear in your kid's room, and you see a little pile of a hollowed out cigar or tobacco, odds are they're filling cigars with weed. They're called blunts. Our kids are so lazy these days. You know, when we were kids, people used to roll their own joints. No, they're so lazy, they hollow out cigars and they fill them with weed. Those are blunts. So what are some of the other things you may find in their room? Xanax bars. Pipes, grinders, scales, and wax. So this thing right here, this is not a vase, okay? This is called a bomb. This thing right here, it looks like a little hockey puck or a silver makeup item. This is called a grinder. They put their weed in here, and they turn it, turn it, turn it, and they can grind it so they can put it in their pipe. Now, this is wax. Now, this is what is making our kids psychotic. This is what is making our kids become addicted. This is actually the process in waxing is used to put in a vape pen, heats it up, turns into a liquid, and then they can, they can actually smoke THC. Now, what is THC? This is the active ingredient in cannabis. And how is that process done? Well, that stem is hung upside down, and they put chemicals on it, propane, and it gets like a waxy, tarry, honey-like substance that gets excruciated from that plant, and it's 100% THC. And that's what the wax looks like. Okay? Now, if you're finding electronic scales or something that looks like a protractor, Remember the protractors? We were in school with little clips on it. It's not that your kids are very smart and they do all their science homework at home. No, that's not it. When you're finding scales in their rooms, that means they're weighing out their weed and they're probably dealing. Okay? So when you're putting away socks and underwear, it is your responsibility to see, snoop, Fine, because you are responsible for everything that kid does until they're 18. Now, <clears throat> some other things they can buy from the darknet. Again, 
Upper left-hand corner is wax. That's what it looks like. The gummy bears then get on the dark net. This is the THC oils they can put into uh, their vape pens. And this is what a vape pen looks like. And they just load this cartridge up and they smoke it wherever they want. It's odorless. Please understand the dangers in that. Now, in talking a little bit about vaping, I went through this myself with my with my son. I have two boys. I have a 26-year-old who's a firefighter paramedic, and I have a 20-year-old soccer player and uh, in college. And when he was in high school, my younger one, he used to hang around a bunch of kids who vaped. Well, then what happened was, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about drug testing here in a second. Uh, I started noticing that when he came home, he smelled like strawberry and cherry. And I was like, you better not be vaping. You're going to ruin your lungs. You're going to ruin your brain function. And you're going to ruin your ability to play soccer in college. Well, then we got a puppy. And uh, the puppy was really good at finding things and loved, loved sweets. She went underneath his bed and found a bunch of vapes. Now, mind you, my son was not um, doing THC. He was just vaping. But I want to teach you about vaping. It is an addiction. One of the board members, Aaron Weiner, uh, I set my son up with him, and he got my son off of that because it was a nicotine addiction that my son had with a gum regimen, uh, another regimen that he was able to put through. My son was able to wean away from that addiction before it got worse. When you see kids vaping, a lot of times they can't stop because it's a nicotine addiction. Now, my older son came forward when I was all over my younger son. He goes, dad, I used to uh, uh, do the Copenhagen stuff. I was addicted too. I didn't know that. So again, you need to be in your kid's life. If you check their social media, you check their computers, you check their bedrooms, you're going to see what they have or have not. So a lot of times, uh, and this is, I, 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 I've gone through this, not personally, um, but with athletes, both of my sons played college soccer, and you had a lot of coaches who wanted to get their kids back on the field, especially in high school. And when the prescriptions run out, guess what they do? They turn to illicit drugs. So if your kid has an injury, make sure you monitor that closely because the amount of prescription medication abuse is unbelievable. So when we look at how prescriptions are obtained, 4% get them from a dealer. 4% took it from a friend or relative when they were visiting. Other sources, 11% uh, bought them from relative, 17% prescribed by a doctor. But look at this, 55% obtained free from a friend or relative. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have prescriptions in your cupboards and you, it, you're not taking them anymore, get rid of them. Some kids will actually look through your cupboards to get their fix when it comes to prescription medication and their opioid addicts. A lot of hospitals, police departments, fire departments have turn-ins where you can put it in the, like, like sending a letter, putting them in there and they'll take care of them, but get rid of your unused medication. If you do find things in a book bag, if you find things in their drawer and you find a pill, you can download an app called Pill ID, and you just go through the drop downs, and it'll tell you exactly what that pill is. Now, what are some other things uh, of the trade for heroin? So I know this is a um, this is a, a, a cannabis or a marijuana presentation, but I want to show you that cut up straws. Um, you're seeing uh, some of these plastic packets. We had an OD one time where the parents wouldn't allow the daughter in the house, so they let her sleep in her car in the driveway. And she had all these foil packets on the floor. And I had asked the mom, I said, well, have you checked on her? Oh, yeah, we checked on her. You know, we say goodnight to her. We just don't let her in the house because she'll steal us from us. 
but we know she's safe in the driveway. Okay. Have, but we thought she was clean. Well, did you see all of these silver wrappers on the floorboard? Well, she likes to chew gum. I'm like, really? Really? So this is what the heroin comes in sometimes, are in foil packets, and it wasn't gum. So if you're seeing rolled up dollar bills on their nightstand, if you're seeing straws that are cut up, razor blades, a lot of times for a high and a low, a lot of kids are smoking weed and doing Xanax at the same time, which is a dangerous combination. So when we look at heroin deaths, I remember, 92% of heroin addicts started with weed, but not every person who smokes weed becomes a heroin addict. But look what happened. From 2000 to 2015, these are the drug deaths. And our kids, because the uh, the potency of THC is so high in the weed today, they, and that's not good enough for them, they go to opioids, and that's what happens. If you think your kid is involved in um, opioids, make sure you take a class on Narcan, and you can get these um, at Walgreens or CVS and keep them at home in case the kid ODs and you wake up in the morning and they're foaming from the mouth. Uh, you can hit them with Narcan. Uh, you'll ruin their high, but you'll save their life. So what are you looking for? These are some of the typical things kids involved in the drug trade are involved in. Let's look at some of these. Some of this is just being a 13-year-old, but in a combination of them together, uh, verbally or physically abusive. Uh, sometimes they, they, they are so lazy to clean their rooms, they'll keep all old food underneath their beds. And, and, and again, that is a tall tale sign that, that something is going on. Not coming home on time, not telling you where they are going. And if you have monitoring software on their device, you can see where they're at at every any time. Lies about their activities, money is missing in small amounts. These are all the things that you can see if in fact your child is involved in the drug trade. So I wanna give you another tool. The tool I want to give you is drug testing your kid at home. I cannot tell you what a the biggest tool you can give your kid to avoid drugs is by drug testing them at home. So how does this work? How do I tell my kid that I'm going to drug test them? Here's how it goes. You cannot be emotionally involved when they're hammered and they come home. You're taking a drug test. No. This is a slow and arduous procedure. Before you ha give your kid a drug test, you have to be worried about three things. What if they test negative? What if they refuse to take the test? And what if they test positive? You have to have a game plan for every single one of these, okay? Now, When you have set this plan up, well, let's say, okay, I'm going to give my kid a drug test because this happened, that happened, this happened, I'm putting it all together and I think something's going on. I want to give you some advice. God has given the moms, the mother, an unbelievable awesome talent called the maternal instinct. This gift that God gives moms is to protect their babies. Whether your baby is six months old or 50, that stuff never goes away. It's God's gift to the mother. Moms, if you're having this feeling because you know every move, every smirk, every walk, every tone in that child because you birthed them or raised them, and if you think, oh my God, something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong, Something's wrong. God is telling you something's wrong. Be a parent. No such thing as privacy for children. So when I first started my company in 2010, I used to sell a, um, because it was such a problem during 2010, 2011, 2012, I used to sell something called a Medtox kit. M-E-D-T-O-X dot com, Medtox. And, and, and only commercials can buy them, but... Um, I had my police department purchase them under seizure money 
And so any parent can get a drug test kit anytime they want, just got to walk into the police department and you'd be given one. I used to tell the moms, I said, okay, you have this feeling. I want you to email me back when you institute the drug test and tell me what they say. So these moms would email me back and 100% of the time, ladies and gentlemen, that mom was right. Because giving your kid a drug test at home is like truth serum. So what you do is you say, okay, pee in a cup. What? Pee in a cup. Why? Because you're doing this, because you're doing this, and I have a feeling something's wrong. Pee in a cup. But mom, you don't trust me. Nope. I have a feeling. I want you to prove me wrong. And this is what happened when moms go by mother's intuition. All right, mom, let me tell you why I'm going to be positive. And it's like truth serum. It's like blah, 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 blah. Well, I was at this party and blah, blah, blah. It's like truth serum. By just saying, I have a feeling, pee in the cup. So you give your child this drug test. You can get it from CVS, Walgreens, wherever, for THC, right? Because we're talking about weed. But you got to have a plan. If your kid pees in the cup and it's negative, it is a day of shopping on you as the parent and their favorite restaurant. You're going to give your kid a hug and say, I love you so much. Thank you for taking this drug test. I just don't know what's going on. Maybe you got a new girlfriend or something. And uh, same, same thing that happens. Uh, anyways, thank you for being a great kid and taking that test. So let's say it is, they say, no way, that's a violation of my privacy. I'm not taking no damn test. Positive test. Your consequences should fall into play, even though they refuse to take the test. That means removing car keys. That means removing cell phone. That means removing computer only for school. That means maybe even taking the door off the hinges of their bedroom. Those are the consequences. Because this thing can take, these drugs can take your kids in places that you can never come back from. And it's your responsibility. So let's say they pee in a cup and it's the third one, it's a negative, it's a positive test. You must have a protocol set up. Okay, it's positive. We're gonna go see Dr. So-and-so for an evaluation. We're gonna go get a blood test and we're gonna get you some help. And we're gonna do this, 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 and this. People like Aaron Weiner, who's on the board, uh, of this organization. People like, and I'll give you the information, um, Matt Quinn from Rosecrans in Illinois. Uh, they are fantastic therapists. They can give you that game plan if they test positive. So please, parents, have a game plan. So let me, I want to, I want to explain to you the aftermath of this. When I first drug tested my older son, he was acting a fool. He came back from a homecoming game and he was like acting weird. He smelled kind of funny, but they were at a bonfire. So I went up and talked to my wife and, and, and I said, well, bring him to me. My wife's from Sicily. So I said, Anthony, your mom wants to see you. So he goes upstairs and he goes, why are you talking so stupid? Test him, Rich. So we tested him and all his friends were in the basement hanging out. So I said, pee in the cup. For what? I said, I don't like the way you're acting. Pee in the cup. Fine. So he pees in the cup. He goes downstairs with all his friends, right? One friend leaves, two friends leave, three friends leave. And what do you think he went down and told his friends? My jerk dad just tested me. Can you believe what he did? And his friend's like, see you later. Because 75% of the kids in high school, ladies and gentlemen, are smoking weed. So then the aftermath of that, my kid was negative. He just had a new girlfriend. He didn't know how to act in front of. Same, same stupid stuff that happens, right? Um, when I went to go test my younger one, my older son came to me and said, you know, dad, that was the best thing you ever did for me is drug test me. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, you should drug test Dominic. He goes, I said, you know something I don't? No, but I will tell you that when I went to parties after you did that, when people were smoking weed at the parties I went to, they're like, hey, you want to hit? 
no, I can't. My dad drug tests me, and he's going to kick my ass if I do that. What? Your parent drug tests you? He goes, yeah, and he'll take everything away from me if, if I test hot. That was a tool my kid used. Not even he – sometimes he didn't have to say anything. When he's with his buddies, oh, no, he can't take a hit of that. His dad will kick his ass because he drug tests him and try to make fun of my son, but that gave my son a way out. It's all about giving your kids tools. And that drug test usually came out right around prom and homecoming. I put it on the counter, wouldn't say anything. They're like, oh, shit. So, again, it's all about being responsible parents. And I want to tell you a story. It leads up into our next session. <clears throat> when I um, got, when I was retiring, uh, right before I retired, we had this thing in Naperville called Last Fling. And all of, you can go in your uniform and you work this if, uh, public event. It's a festival and things like that. So me and my couple, my partners, you know, walk to Starbucks downtown Naperville and I'm waiting for my drink. And this very pretty lady comes up to me, my age. She's looking at my tag and she goes, are, are you Detective Wistaki? And I'm like, yeah, hi, how are you? And she goes, oh, I'm fine. She goes, you don't know who I am, but I kind of stalked you for the last couple of years. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, she goes, I loved your events. I love watching you speak. And I just want to let you know that uh, I find you responsible for my divorce. I'm like, what? Lady, what are you talking about? She goes, I'm just being funny, but... Every time I would come home, I would tell my husband that we need to monitor their cell phones. We need to drug test them because Detective Wostaki says it's a good idea because he's got all of this reasons why we need to do this. And my husband was such a narcissist that my sons don't do anything wrong. And if they do something wrong, they have to pull themselves by their bootstraps and blah, blah, blah. No way the police are going to tell us that we got to do this. And that's the type of guy he was. She says, I couldn't handle it anymore, so I divorced him. And I wish we would have listened to you, detective. I was like, what do you mean? She goes, well, I've got a 24-year-old who's in and out of rehabs in South Florida, and he's a heroin addict. And I've got a 20-year-old who sits in the basement, doesn't go to school, plays Call of Duty all day, and smokes weed. Had we had starting earlier, I would have had my boys. But because my husband wouldn't let me do what you said we should do, I lost them. I lost everything. So what I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, is from my past experiences in real life. And I want to, to, to share this with you so you know exactly what to do so we don't suffer later. So again, we went through all of that. Now, my final thing that I want to talk about is monitoring software. If any of you, this is going to be a, a minute or two. So if any of you uh, are currently going through, oh my God, what kind of uh, phone should I get my kids? Well, a lot of times parents make the mistake of buying their kid an iPhone or giving them an old iPhone they had because they don't want to go and buy a new one. If you are involved in this right now in making this decision, whether you should or should not buy your kid a cell phone, get them an Android. Apple makes it very difficult to monitor their systems in real time because of two-step authentication. But if you give them an Android, it's open source. The two best softwares out there are WebWatcher and Bark. I like, I like Bark a little better for Apple, and let me show you how this works. So if you go to my website, at be sure consulting okay let me show you where that's at right now so go to my website at be sure consulting.com <clears throat> get a second for it to load okay you just go to schools here hover over schools and then you go to monitoring software. So I'm gonna leave that up for a second so you can see that if you wanna take a picture of that, go right ahead. So go to BeSureConsulting.com, go to schools, and go to monitoring software. Here are special codes that these companies had given me to give to you to try it out 30 days free. 
okay? So <clears throat> the only way to get into Snapchat messages, ladies and gentlemen, is if your kid has an Android and you use WebWatcher. It's the only way, because they take screen captures of what your kid is doing every minute. So let me show you how Bark works. So this is, I have a fake account in, in Bark, and I want to show you exactly. So that Bark is attached to this girl's, fake girl's, um, uh, Twitter account. And you can see this is done by, um, by trigger words. So it has AI, and these are all the things that it reports to you on. And it'll alert you if any of this stuff happens. So let's go here. So this was an alert back on September 16th. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to review it. And it picked up either what your son or daughter is typing or what it's being typed to your son or daughter. Meet me after school. I'm going to kick your ass. So let me go to the next one. Alcohol and drugs. Dad said weed is a gateway drug. Ha, 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 ha. So again, these are signs that something could be happening. Uh, Self-harm or suicide. Someone FaceTime me thinking of cutting again, just want to feel okay. So by you having this monitoring software on your kids' devices, you will know what's going on. So what's that conversation like? Well, here it is. What you're going to do is say, look, mom and dad are buying you a phone. This is our phone, not yours, and we can take it away anytime we want. We're letting you use it. There is no expectation of privacy, and we have monitoring software on this. Why? You don't trust me? Forget it. I don't even want it. No, it's not that we don't trust you, but other people may say or make you do things that we know you wouldn't want to do but we want to catch it early. But look, if you don't give us a reason to check, we're not going to check. But if your grades goes from A to Ds, we're checking. If you're not playing your sport like you should be, I'm checking. If you are an hour late after curfew with no reason, I'm checking. If you're a little jerk to your little sister more than usual, we're checking because you're our responsibility and this is our device. Now, do you want this one or do you want a flip phone? Pick your pick. But again, you can get alerts on Bark or on WebWatcher to see exactly what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. So you, they have to know that they can come to you if something goes wrong, but you're going to be in it. And all of these things are how we stop our kids from going off the deep end when they become involved in drugs by themselves or with their friends. Without further ado, um that is all i have here is my contact information and i'll take any questions that you may have uh at this time rich this is um this is fantastic and scary all at the same time and yeah. my goodness i wish i had met you five years ago uh, when we were in the mess of all of this and i know this is going to be a tremendous help uh, for so many parents, and we are going to uh, share it all over our Johnny's Ambassadors social. Fantastic. Uh, we do have a couple questions for you. Okay. We have uh, about five more minutes, ladies and gentlemen, sure. those who are on live, so please uh, send any additional questions. Um, I will read off the ones I have in uh, the question box. What do you suggest we do if we didn't start this when our kid was eight, nine, 10, 11, 12? Uh, my child is 15, his phone has a password, um, and they think we think they are taking drugs. What do we do if we waited too long, I guess, is what they're trying to ask, Rich. Well, it's, it's never too late to be the parent, okay? And when parents make mistakes, they always try to be their kids' friends first. Our kids don't need any more friends. They need mentors. And they have to know what the rules are and what the consequences are if they don't follow rules. That's part of life. And, and I'm, I'm so serious, you know, I can't tell you how many times I drop my kid's to phone in a toilet because if they're not, it, they're, that's the consequence, okay? 
if you're not going to give me the access to this phone, you're not going to have the phone. Well, you're not going to get access. Okay, plop, and see what happens. So I'm serious. Yes, I will get you another phone when you're responsible enough. But if that code changes, there's going to be a consequence for that. And, and it's tough because we don't want to do this to our children. We want to trust our children. But when the drugs take over, that's not your kid. That's the drugs talking. Which one do you want? Yeah. And so I'm guessing you're going to say the same thing about children and high school and cars. So if you believe the car is enabling the child to get access to drugs, my assumption is you would recommend removing the car. Yes, removing the car. And I'll take it a step further. I put tracking, a tracking device in my son's car. I did. Um, every Sunday, I removed it, plugged it in my computer. My wife saw how fast they were going, where they went, how long they were there. And, and I know well, some parents say, this guy's out of his mind. But you know what? My kids are safe. It's, it's a, it's a part-time job. But my yeah. kids are safe. And my, my older son is a firefighter paramedic. And he teaches in medic school. And, and my younger kid wants to do what I do. And he's very successful. So it, it's, it, it's, all about, it's all about putting their time in. You can't just say, especially with social media, the frontal cortex of our kids' brains are not mature enough to handle what goes on in social media. And they will be guide, di guided, directed, indoctrinated through social media. If you're not in there with them, somebody else is teaching your kid. We have to be in our kids' technology lives. And that's what's going to make them safe. But a yeah. car is a big thing. No, you're not taking the car. But sometimes you even have to remove the remove the um, cable from the battery in order for them not to take it. You know what I mean? Yes. It, it could come to its extremes. Or put a tire block on it so they can. Right. <laughs> you know, I'll you get your the own car. I'm, I'm not going to school then. Okay. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's right. your Girls grade. The officer's going to come and see you then. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, I had. We put a tracker on our, our son. Unfortunately, Johnny was so smart, he knew how to put a keylogger on the computer, so he had all the passwords. So that's another uh -huh. story. We can talk about that later. But um, what about gaming on phones? You hear a lot and you see a lot in movies, especially in suspense and spy movies, you know, that there's a lot of uh, drug interactions that can be done in chat rooms yeah. and video games. So yeah. do you see that commonly on phones as well? And is there any way for parents to check on all the games that our kids are using? Yeah, so what happens, uh, Fortnite, Call of Duty, Roblox, Minecraft, uh, what happens, there's a website called Discord. And Discord is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a communication platform for the games. And this is where a lot of kids are groomed. A lot of kids plan on going meeting each other, parties. So if you can find a software like WebWatcher to monitor what goes into D Discord, and then if a person wants to groom your kid or have a relationship with your kid, they will take that kid to WhatsApp. So WhatsApp is one of the biggest um, private uh, chat platforms out there right now, and it is owned by Facebook now. So Facebook owns Facebook, Instagram, and now WhatsApp. Yes. And so that would be something else if you have the password to your phone, which everybody listening to this now will have, that you should Absolutely. check those apps as well. Yes. Detective Wistocki, thank you um, You're very so welcome. much for this incredibly informative and startling session. I hope that our uh, parents immediately make some changes, and I want to invite them also to go to your website. Uh, you have some great online training. Uh, for parents, it's very inexpensive. It is worth uh, the $25, everyone. It's cyberparenting-101.com. Is that correct, Rich? Yeah, I'll put that up. I put that up here real quick. It's cyberparenting-101.com. If parents, if you want to get your own training, a lot of the courts throughout the United States are using this when they're when when juveniles are involved in the system, and parents need a helping hand on what to do. Uh, they'll make the parents take an online class. If you want to bring this curriculum to your schools, all you need to do is go to cyberparenting-101.com and hit school video packages. Uh, all of my training is now online because of COVID. Uh, we have Correct. trainings for students, parents, and school faculty. 
and you can see exactly they're either from five to 15 minute shorts and with the students there's also tests and quizzes involved so it's an online curriculum they can use throughout the year I think it's so critically important, and I hope that everyone spends some time on your site uh, and some more time educating themselves and has some, have some very important conversations uh, with their teams coming up. Rich, thank you so much for your time, talent, You're very and for being one of Johnny's ambassadors. Yeah, take call, me care, anytime, any, take, call me anytime if you want to hit me up on Facebook. It's Cyber Safe Schools Online in Facebook, so I post a lot of stuff there. Awesome. And I bet we can type your name and find you anywhere. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Detective. Talk Merry to you later. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.